Welcome and thank you for tuning in to Modern Aged Middle Life, a podcast brought to you by Emily Baum and Graham Jarvis, comedy writers addressing modern day confusions for the middle aged. So a bit of a disclaimer this week. I do have terrible jet lag, so apologies in advance if some of this doesn't make sense today. All right. Could you explain that more? I'm not sure where you're coming from. I can't explain it more. Sorry. So, dear listener, we just have to imagine what on earth she's meaning by this. I have just had a 30-minute giggling fit with Graham before we even got in in the recording booth today. So I hope that it all makes sense. But if it doesn't, well... We can always delete it. (laughs) And you'll never hear this. So, imagine Graham. Imagine Graham. I don't need to. I am Graham. (laughs) Imagine a better Graham. A rich Graham. (gasps) A Graham that has won the lottery. Oh, I like this. And will have more money than he can ever spend within his entire lifetime, which, given your age, is about 20 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Excuse me. Luckily, I keep a claw hammer (laughs) close at hand for these moments. (laughs) I'm not ageist. I just don't like old people. So, you've won the lottery. You've got this huge amount of money. There's more zeros there. It's billions. You can never spend it in your lifetime. It's billions. It's billions. It's not millions. We're not messing around. Okay. Everyone's had this fantasy where they're on the train and it's a rainy day and they're passing the time and they think, what would I do if I won the lottery? Well, if it was billions, I used to like driving Mm. a lot and then I didn't like driving when the roads became really congested. Mm. So I think I would solve people's transport problems by banning everybody from the roads. I'd buy all the roads and I would be the only person driving. solving everybody's transport problems? Because they haven't got a choice. (laughs) They can't worry about it. No, they've got a choice. They'd have to go back to what was that politician said on your bike? Walking. <laughs> yeah, they'd have to go to Legs. walking. It'd solve the sort of obesity problem that's always being mentioned. People would have to walk. That sounds like you're starting some sort of dictatorship. <laughs> just you the... want to win this money to start a dictatorship? No, I just want to be able to drive without all the other people on the roads. I think we're seeing a side of Fidel Castro of Wouldn't... West Bifleet here. <laughs> Hang on, I'll just put my cigar away. When they got into work, so they lived 20 miles outside the city centre mm. and they walked into work in the city centre where they worked, mm. they'd set off on Monday with a pack-up and a backpack and perhaps a little bit of camping on the way. Wednesday, they'd get there and they'd say, well, good for you to turn up. And you say, well, I'm only here for a short while because I've got to be back home by Friday <laughs> night because I'm taking the kids ice skating. So it'd be great. People would love it. Hardly any time in work. Employees to get used to it eventually. Wouldn't they just work from home? Well, they might do, I suppose. Well, they could do. It's their choice. I don't care. I mean, I'm, I'm just waving at people like a la Queen. Graham's bus service. As I'm going down the A1. OK, here's what I'd do. Right. I would have a car, a big car, yeah. a very powerful car, which perhaps pulled a coach load of people. So if people were hitching a lift, I'd, I'd let them come on the coach behind my car. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. And then I'd just, every now and then, if they knocked on the window... This is just sounding a lot like the Hunger Games. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not sure I'm feeling confident about you winning all this money now. (laughs) I think it's turned you to the dark side of it. Okay. Well, money does that to people, I've heard. It does. Yeah. It does. It does turn people... Okay, so you don't like my first idea. (laughs) I'll, I'll think of another one. Over to you. What would you do if you won an unlimited amount of money? Chocolate fountain in the front drive. <laughs> God. <laughs> Giant chocolate fountain. I'd buy a large house. It would be a bungalow for obvious reasons. Yeah. Because I can't be doing with stairs these days. <laughs> yeah. Just... And I'd put a stunner stair lift in round the whole house. Round the whole house. Yeah. So it's like a horizontal stunner. Yeah. Not a stair. It's basically lift. like a wall constructed scale extras with a large seat on it. It's like a train. Yeah, that goes around my house, but wall orientated so it didn't take up floor space should I decide oh. to walk. So as you drove into my new house, there would be a, a very gaudy statue out the front, probably of a semi naked David Beckham. Okay. With a leaf of sorts, uh-huh. spouting chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but presumably there'd be a big cover over the top, like a pergola thing, pergola, so that the yeah. birds didn't uh, no, we'd make feed it, your we'd chocolate We'd make it fountain. that vegan-friendly chocolate that David was spouting, Yeah. so that should the birds wash in it, they would be fine. I'm surprised you didn't ask me where the chocolate was coming from. <laughs> I don't want to know. I hadn't thought that through. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to know. But I would say that people drove up and just, your first impression was, oh my God, what is this? It would be impressive. It Although would be. I'm more the horizontal Stanis stair lift around the wall, probably two thirds of the way up, that yeah. take you from room to room. Yeah. Sounds really good. I like that idea because you could come, literally, if you're feeling lazy, it have to be a comfy chair as well. So if you're feeling oh, yeah. lazy, you just jump in your remote control Stanis stair lift yeah maybe if you could get the technology to catch up it would work on mind control so you could think it's movement if it was a really big house as you said it was going to be mm. presumably if you got home and you were really tired your yeah. staff presume you have a lot of staff could just load you onto the stand stair lift but instead of having a chair there perhaps you could have a bed attachment you're making it sound more like a care home and taking the novelty <laughs> out of it well like when you Swiss... get home and someone lifts you into bed well lifts you basically... into the bed on the stand stair lift and then they press the button it's like and it takes you off into the bowels of your mansion. And uh, going back to my chocolate perhaps, fountain. Obviously, they'll have to work out the velocity of the tilt as you're thrown yeah. off the stomach stair lift speed on it as onto well. your bed. Don't want a slow poke stair lift. I want torque on it. Oh. I want it. I want nitrous on the back of my <laughs> stair lift. Would you have some fancy gas like you know, people like smoke machines at parties? Oh. Would you have like that coming out the back with Wouldn't different that be brilliant LED lights? If you were having a party and you had a large lounge and you made an entrance on your stair lift, yeah, and there was smoke filled, <laughs> and it played some sort of music like "We Will Rock You" with from Queen <laughs> and the laser lights and everything else. And then you come in the room. <laughs> <little stair-lived. laughs> Welcome, thanks for coming. <laughs> I'll be making my way around the room to greet you all. <laughs> and would in this great big mansion of yours, would you have a menagerie of sorts? Would you have pets? Oh, no things? more animals. No. No. Good. No. I'll tell you what I would have. Mm-hmm. I could have wall mounted TV screens that showed me images of animals, like live webcams from zoos or something like that. In the rainforest, perhaps. A, oh, yeah. The That's home better. of an orangutan. Yes. But you we could, could do it both ways. So I would what, put. The orangutan would be watching you. Yes. So I'd put a 55 inch TV screen in the middle of the, <laughs> of the rainforest so it could watch me mooch them around my house. So you'll see the orangutan sleeping a lot. Yes. Because <laughs> they're bored. So. Or staring, <laughs> staring at the telly, making faces. As I enter in a cloud of smoke to We Will Rock You on my nitrous based yeah, Stanis stair lift. I think the orangutans would be whistling for the logging company to come in. <laughs> Just stop this Just now. Please. Stop it. End it. Yes. What car would you buy? I think I'd go for a Morris Thousand. Really? A good old classic. Morris South. You went for something that would, if you were in an accident, you'd lose your legs. I wouldn't drive it. <laughs> you did it as an ashtray. When, <laughs> when I'm that rich, you think I'm going to bother going anywhere. If I want anything, like, you know, say I wanted to go to a particular restaurant, yeah. I'd just have it deconstructed and rebuilt near my home. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah so, like, eventually, London would be slowly eaten away as all the buildings were taken down and it'd be recreated really close to me. West Byfleet, London. <laughs> it'd be fabulous. <laughs> I'd definitely buy a pub with a good selection of nuts. real ale <laughs> and good selection of nuts and crisps. Would you have a pub in your house? No, I think I'd have it built just a distance away and just oh. for fun, every now and then, I'd have it closed down because of the noise. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have a pub but I'd have it somewhere in the house where... You had to go down a tunnel or something, and then you popped up in the pub. So it was a, <laughs> a pop-up pub. Pop-up pub. What would be your dream house? Well, it depends on which continent I'm choosing to like, have my no, house. Nobody wants to learn how continent or which <laughs> continent you are. <laughs> <gasps> you could have an underwater home. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Aquatic house. Yeah, you could call it Bubbledum or something. <laughs> Bubbledum. <laughs> Bubbledum. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We cannot play tennis today. Graham and I are going to our holiday home. <laughs> Bubbledum. No, not the Maldives. It's Bubbledum. Yeah. Really? And <laughs> perhaps I'd have it made out of ice. 
Ooh. If it was up in uh, Iceland or something, okay. very suitable, isn't it? Yeah. As long as it wasn't built on a geyser or something, because you'd have to be forever rebuilding. Yeah. I think in England, though, if I kept in England, having reformed the government, because wealthy people can do that. You, you can't just... reform the government. If you're very wealthy, you can. No, you can't. You Look can't walk many... up to Theresa May and say I'm a lottery winner, get stuffed. Oh, if you've got the size of the win you, you're talking about. Yeah. They'd bend over backwards to do whatever Makes you request. Makes a nice change, us shafting the government as opposed <laughs> to being the other way around. They would, they'd say, yes, 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 Graham, that's a really good idea. We'll do whatever you want, just give our party all the money. Oh, that is true. Yeah, little party handshakes. Yeah, they Couple deny it. They'd say, no, 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 never seen any of Graham Jarvis's money. No, don't no. keep records. No. no. And the thing is, if you've got infinite amount of money, by definition, if the taxman tried to work out how much you'd spent, mm. he'd never find out because he's counting it. He'll never get there, will he? So, yeah, <laughs> you know, that's a great thing about infinity. So infinity minus 10 is still infinity. So you prove it, mate. What would you buy? Apart from the Morris Thousand. Oh, my God, it's like shopping with the Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> <laughs> you could just sit at the Antiques Roadshow and anything that took your fancy, you could just offer them money for it, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, you could just buy the Antiques Roadshow, really. You could do, and then have yeah. it appraised. I wouldn't want any of that, all that old stuff. You could no. own your own box at a theatre of your choice for your lifetime. Well, if I really wanted that box, as I've already explained, I would just have it taken apart and reconstructed in my garden. So you don't just want to leave that wall. house. This is your problem. There'd just be this wall with a box on it. That would be quite cool, actually. I quite like that. <laughs> so, uh, you'd just be up there, <laughs> just sit up sitting there, there, waiting. Looking at your neighbours. Yeah, waving. Evening, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> you having a barbecue? Yes. That looks nice. It was nice when Reg did the lawn this afternoon. Kept me occupied for a good half hour. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't get down, Margaret. <laughs> That's why I've been up here so long. <laughs> we didn't build stairs. <laughs> We've ordered a stilt walker to help me. <laughs> It'll be coming by later, so don't be worried if anybody's looking in your top window. <laughs> Come over to the top of your hedges while he's... <laughs> Yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't yeah. it? Do your hedges, yeah. yeah. Mm. What would you buy? So, you know, the hot tub thing. I've done the hot tub. I got drunk one afternoon and bought a hot tub. That was a difficult conversation to have. Yeah. Turned up four o'clock in the afternoon at our front door. I was absolutely smoking drunk, I was. And I had to explain to Chris that I'd bought a ten-man hot tub and then tried to sell it to her by the fact it was a double-depth hot tub. A double-depth? Yeah, I don't know why I thought that What's was the... really going to make her go woo. What's a double depth? So it's deeper than the average hot tub, so you could properly swim in it. Twice by the sound of it. Yeah. So if it's that deep, how do you... Most people like to just sit around a hot tub. Yeah. Has it got seats? Yes. Um, this is past tense. We've got rid of it now. OK. And we this... had it for years. But, you know, that was eight, £9,000 worth of a oh drunken... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, we're not talking like a little bit. If I get drunk and buy something, I really commit. <laughs> I totally commit. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And this is why I don't have any money now, Graham. <laughs> OK. <laughs> and that's why we're dreaming of a lottery. That's why we're dreaming of a lottery win, because I yeah. have debt collectors I now need to pay. OK. Because every time I get drunk, I buy obscene <laughs> <laughs> So it's not going to be a hot tub that you buy? No, I wouldn't. I'd have a swimming pool. Yeah? I'd have a swimming pool that was really warm In all or year out, round. Indoor or outdoor? Or I'd have a hybrid. Oh. Yeah, I'd have a hybrid with a glass roof that you could also grow stuff on. So half of it you could get sunlight through and then half of it, you know, you'd have a green roof and then bifolding doors. So you felt like you were in and out. You would buy bifolding doors. Is that something about stutter? I'd have a little guest cabin. A guest yeah, cabin. Yeah, I'd have a guest cabin that looked like a small shingled wooden castle. In the uh -huh. garden. Wouldn't that be cool to say to guests, you'd have them around and you'd say, right, your bedroom's just over there, just over the third croquet lawn. Yeah. It's the one that looks like Cinderella's castle. <laughs> <laughs> the miniature version. Well, I'd employ an army of men, I think, because I'd be fed up of all the buildings coming to me from London oh, and the yeah. balconies and all yeah. that. I think, no, I'm going to change my direction. So I think I want the beach here. So I'd have a whole beach imported. And yeah. I think, I need some sea to go with this beach. So I'd have an army of men chipping away at the south coast. <laughs> <laughs> bringing, bringing the sea to me. You're a proper, proper, scary, scary job. The thing is, like the government would say, yeah. but it'll raise employment. Why? 
Well, because all those people chipping at the coast. Yeah, but there's no evidence to live because they're running out of they, land mass. They, they never think <gasps> about they that. They could borrow your underwater house. <laughs> yeah, they could. They could all live at Bobbledon. And it, the rent would be so reasonable. Yeah, and there's yeah. no roads to snarl up. Absolutely not. <laughs> they'll have to walk there, soaking their feet in the sea. But, oh, this is so good when you've walked 400 miles. <laughs> oh, no, I forgot my snorkel. How am I going to get out to Bobbledon? <laughs> <laughs> Bubble to me. <laughs> I wouldn't want a lawnmower. I'd want miniature ponies to eat the grass for me. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. They'd all be bleached white with a horn glued to them. <laughs> in this day and age of anti plastic. Mm. Um, no, they'd be real ones. Okay. <laughs> They're all Barbie horses. You wouldn't have to wind them up then. <laughs> <laughs> They'd go waddling up. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Jarvis, go and wind up the ponies. I want to see them run round. Yes. From my quicker, Jarvis. The, the first one you wound up slowing down. Oh, I'd have bumper cars. Yeah. I'd have bumper cars in my house. In your house? No, outside. Okay. I don't want to make it look too tacky. No. <laughs> Bit of finesse there. Lovely. Yeah. It'll distract from a David a Beckham Fergie. chocolate fountain anyway. Yeah, peeing chocolate. Yeah. Out, out round I the didn't front. say he was peeing. Okay. Well, it's not him, is it? No. Although if you've got unlimited money, I'm sure he'll do whatever. <laughs> yeah. <Probably> David, be... <laughs> what are your plans for the next ten years? Yes. <laughs> I might have Gary Barlow. Yeah? Yeah. Why Gary Barlow? I don't know. I'm yeah. just thinking Gary Barlow, David Beckham, okay. Jason Momoa. They could all be... <laughs> Momoa. <laughs> Momoa, Aquaman. I thought you were going to have horses to do the grass. <laughs> I'm not keeping up. I'm just up. My, my fountain's growing now. So what would be the main thing that you would buy if today a letter dropped through your letterbox mm. saying you've won X billion pounds? What would the very first thing be that you would do? Do you know scream? what? Scream? In reality, scream? If you'd won a billion do pounds. Do I look like a screamer to you? <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> I know he's the In case. <laughs> I wouldn't scream. I think I would check it all out first. I'm the sort of person that would go, and this is going to sound really sappy, I would help out my friends. Oh. I would. So people that I know who need a car and can't afford a car or... A clockwork miniature pony. <laughs> a clockwork miniature pony <laughs> Or their own Stanley Stairlift that plays We Will Rock You. I will help all of those people <laughs> out. Smoke. Yep. Yeah. Everything. It, it sounds whole... like when you go to a charity shop <laughs> thinking, oh, it'd be nice to just get a book or something, a nice novel. And you go in there and eventually after a good old browse, you think there's actually nothing in here that I want. And this sounds close to what you're suggesting you might give your friends. No, I would I would buy, say that a friend of mine that's got a broken car, then I would get them a new car and nothing too flashy, something that they can afford to run Morris themselves. Morris Thousand. Something less like a murder them. <laughs> 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 yeah, stuff like that. Probably give to a couple of charities first. And then once I've done my do-gooding bit, you guaranteed ticket into the uh, into the Great White Gates. Oh. I like cars, so I'd probably buy... You like cars? I do like cars. So I'd probably go for the Porsche SUV, or I would go for a Lexus. Why wouldn't you get one of each? Because I've got to store it. But thinking of employment again, you could get people to do it for you. Drive I don't want other people around. driving my cars. Oh, driving really? Cars. Oh, yes. gosh. No one's allowed in my car now. So when you arrive at home, you don't say, Jeeves, park this for me and no. <laughs> throw him the I keys. I see Jeeves, get your dirty little grumpy paws off back in the cupboard. So who washes your car? Oh, no, I'd have people washing my oh, car. Say... Not washing my own car. What about doing the valet bit inside? Yeah, they'll do that too. Yeah. Just not drive, drive it. Okay. Very possessive about yeah. driving your car. I would have a monster truck. Would you have a monster truck? Um, and you could drive over other people's cars in your monster truck, or you could just have cars in your oh, car. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. You mean a very big truck? It's a monster truck. I was thinking you meant a truck where you kept your monsters. Monsters. And I was wondering which no, sort of monsters I'd you'd buy. I struggled to get my mother-in-law in a truck, to be honest. <laughs> Is she vicious? No, she's <laughs> Can got I lend a bad you back. a hammer? <laughs> she's got a bad back. Oh, saying that, if I told her there was a sale on inside, she might help in. Well, if you were very, very wealthy, I think you'd find everyone's relationship changed. Mm. What do you think I could buy her a house in Australia? <laughs> I was thinking more SpaceX. Oh, could she have one of your condos in Bobbledon? 
<laughs> she she most certainly could. She could be in one of the little pods associated with Bubbledum. Mm-hmm. Is so, it Bubbledon or Bubbledon? Bubbledum. I'm it's sorry. underwater. So, bubble can... or bubble? Bubble. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Bubbledum. <laughs> Bubbledum. Yeah. I can market that. Yeah. Yeah, I can see holiday brochures and everything. Yeah, loads yeah. of them. Yeah. I love that idea. And people don't need to worry about global warming. Or washing. Who cares about the sea levels? Yeah, washing. Spruce yourself up by sticking your head out the window before dinner. <laughs> so I'm still not convinced by your reaction of winning billions. What do you mean? Not screaming? Yeah. People would. Would you scream? If I could scream, I would. Oh, but I, I bet discovered. I'd, would, would it be more like a sort of. Eh? It'd be quite a feminine. Eh? Jill, Jill, come quick. I don't know why I've turned Jill into a <laughs> Penelope pit stop. For anyone confused, that was Emily impersonating me, not me. I know it sounded very much like me, but it wasn't. It was Emily. <laughs> Jill, Jill, come quick. <laughs> We've won the Spanish lottery. I just need to post off my passport and we're in the money. Yes. I lost the ability to scream, I discovered. What? Once around Clapham, um, we were jumped by some guys who wanted to rob us, me and my drunken mates, and I found one of my mates was screaming at them to clear off, which for some strange reason they didn't pay any attention to. So if you're ever mugged and you think, go away, (laughs) is going to work, Well, it didn't on this occasion. Another of my mates just stood there as if he'd lost the knowledge of how to walk. He just stood there. He froze. Yeah. And two of the ladies with us uh, were more like, you try and get my handbag and you'll find you're knocked out, mate. (laughs) So at this point, the women do a lot better than the men. (laughs) And I tried to knock one of them away. Later that evening, we were talking about this episode where they hadn't managed to get anything from us. Yeah. And uh, the guy that had frozen Mm. um, seemed to not remember anything about it. Was there some sort of something happened earlier on? And uh, one of the guys who had actually screamed, I said, gosh, you scream. And I tried to scream and discovered I can't scream. How are you trying to scream? Well, you know, when you... Try now. I will try. Go on, try. Okay. Uh, It just doesn't... It's like... (laughs) <laughs> I can do a da, 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 much, much better. See, you should have just blown a horn at them. Yeah, yeah OK. <laughs> and they would have moved off. Or perhaps... Because yeah. they would have thought you were crazy. <laughs> yes. What you mean, these villains approaches <laughs> with robbery on their mind. Halt there, you villain. <laughs> halt though. <laughs> exactly, yeah. With a left hand, hand up, facing them. In the, in the familiar stop. And the other hand... Da, 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 da. I do think there's something to be said for trying to out-crazy an assailant. I've just come from New York, hence the jet lag. OK. And the man came towards me. He was about six foot five. He was very big bloke. No teeth. <laughs> no teeth. <laughs> no teeth and a large stick. Oh, God. <laughs> a combination that does not make you feel particularly comfortable as a five-foot-eight woman. Mm-hmm. And he came right up to me and he went, can I have some change to buy some food, please? <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know what to do. So I just basically <laughs> opened my eyes really, really wide, smiled as big as I could, and went, ha-ha, and carried on walking. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by Media Music in association with Mac Entertainment.